Yes, people, welcome back to Premzy TV. Hope everybody is blessed. I just want to say a massive thank you and appreciation to everybody who's subscribed and everybody who's tuning in to, to follow, man. You know, it's only been a few months I've started my own YouTube channel. So it's, you know, it's a bit, little bit rough and ready, but I'm just doing, taking everything as it comes and just, I'm just taking it step by step. So a massive appreciation and thank you to everyone that's tuning in. So big up to you guys. Um, you know, anyone comments, um, always through the comments. I'll try to reply to as many as I can. So big up to you, man. We're going on to Arsenal versus Wolves now. We've not played for about two and a little bit weeks. We've been out in Dubai training. The transfer window shut and we didn't get no players over the line. So it looks like the team's been focused on what they've been set out to do in Dubai. Hopefully it benefits the team because it can work one of two ways. Normally either you don't play games for two weeks and you come back and you're rusty and you shambles or you manage to get that little break and you've got the energised your batteries and you're ready to go again. Hopefully it's the latter because we got beat by Wolves um, last season as well. You know, they normally do tend to turn up against us and always give us a difficult game. So it's not going to be an easy task playing Wolves. We've got to play them twice in two weeks. You know, it's going to both be demanding games. If Wolves beat us tomorrow, then they go above us. So it's a very, very important game for Mikel Arteta and Arsenal because of the way January has panned out. You know, he let Aubameyang go to Barcelona without getting a replacement. I was listening to a little bit of his press conference earlier on and he was talking, well, he was talking about um, the, talking about Lacazette and Eddie and Ketia being enough to, to take us through to the rest of the season. Also saying, barring we don't get any injuries, we should be okay. But however, injuries, COVID, all of this kind of stuff is inevitable. And if you're managing a situation correctly, there was room for another striker to come in. Yeah, maybe you might not get the target that you want and the target that you're after. And you're not just trying to add any Tom, Dick and Harry to the team. I understand that. But Eddie and Laka's contracts are both running out at the end of the year, at the end of this season. So that's space for another striker to come in with potentially, well, not potentially, definitely a, a, a proper banger in the summer. So to be honest with you, I can't see that kind of that that kind of perception about not taking risks because you have to take risks in football. Chelsea do every team takes risks. We've done it in the past with with Pepe. Obviously we've not been the smartest team at taking risks. However, there's been an opportunity for us to bring two strikers in, either one in January and one in the summer because two strikers are going out the door. Aubameyang's already gone out the door. So I can't really see the sense in that. Um, but Aubameyang got interviewed and said that the main problem at Arsenal for him was just Arteta. Everything else, there was nothing else that was an issue. Arteta's come back out in his press conference and he's, he's more or less just said that he's the solution to the problem. He's the solution, sorry, rather than the problem. So he's, he's more or less coming out and saying in other words that it needed to be done. But what I want to see as a fan, and I'm sure what every other fan wants to see, is you open your mouth and just say it as it is. Why is it so hard for these managers to just come out and say exactly how it is? Because the bottom line of it is Aubameyang's gone now. So there's no, there's no hiding that he's gone. He left him out for time. Everyone, the newspapers, everyone knew that there was a problem going on. Why not just come out and clear it up so we could just move past it and not have to keep going on about it? And people then can make their own mind up of who's in the wrong and who's in the, in the right. But yeah, so anyway, it's an important game for him because if Eddie and Laka don't score no goals, the question's just going to be asked straight away. You didn't bring a signing in straight down to you. Because we've seen against Burnley, you know, we couldn't really get that goal. And when we need that goal, we couldn't push for it and grab it. So there's going to be many more situations like that to come this season. And the question's always going to come back down to, the pressure's always going to come back down to Arteta because he didn't manage to get no cover in at all. Eddie and Ketty and Lacazette, three goals between them so far this season. It's not good, good enough. They're not going to magically start scoring 10 goals each. It's just not going to happen. But Bruno Large, you know, he he he's, he got knocked out of the FA Cup by Norwich. You know, it's a, a surprise uh, result for me, to be honest with you, because 
no, um, Norwich are not really been performing so great. Yeah, they've come into a little bit of form, but Wolves are Wolves look like a very well drilled team under Bruno Large. You can see the improvements in the squad. You can see that they they've all got an idea and they're all playing off the same page, and they're very decisive with with them. Um, with Wolves, they've got a very good midfield, and this is where the key is going to be for me in this game is the middle of the pitch, because they've got yeah they might be old in um, Jao Moutinho, but he's a very very intelligent player. Ruben Neves in there as well, and for me, Shaka can't be in that midfield. I think we're going to have to drop Odegaard back in there because every time Shaka's in there, yeah he might be one of the best midfielders we got at the moment in that position, but he's a liability. It's a 50-50 chance every game whether he's going to stay on or he's going to go. So, dropping Odegaard in that position, I think he can play that position. Um, I think he, 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 you know, he's not going to be that player that's going to be breaking everything up and 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 stuff like that. But he can play that position. However, with um, Ruben Neves in 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 midfield, I think we're going to have to really get a grip of him because he's one of them players that can just grab the game by the scruff of the neck and and, and dictate. And that's something that, that we have to make sure that we snap out. Uh, hopefully, Tommy Asu's back. I've heard that in the training. Um, he's been doing very well and he looks he looks good. So hopefully, Tommy Asu's back. And because the right side, when he's not been there, it's just looked appalling, to be honest with you. He's been a very big miss, Tommy Asu. Um, you know, the Wolves have lost Adama Traore to Barcelona as well. And... To be honest with you, I'm happy about that in a sense because whenever we did used to play up against him, man just used to like bullying up man. You know, people say that he's not clinical enough, but I used to like him as a player, so I'm glad that we're not having to play against him. But it's going to be a difficult game. It's going to be we're away. I'm going to be travelling down there myself tomorrow, so hopefully I'll come back happy and see some see some positive signs and take some positivity away from the game because. Over the last January window that's just gone, I can't really see anything to be positive about. I can't really see the direction where the club want to go in the sense of pushing up for these European places. Because if you had any ambition about yourself, you know, the signings and opportunities there to be made. If other players, other teams can make signings, I'm sure we could make signings. I think it's all excuses. Now, Arteta's got no excuses. At the end of the season, wherever he comes, is all down to him. He shifted a lot of players out and he hasn't brought the significant players in that we need and he still keeps going, playing with players like Shaka. That's a massive liability. Got his faith in Eddie and Laka. You can't hit the barn door between them. Yeah, Laka gives you um, good good energy and good, in, good interplay and stuff like that. But we need goals in this team. We just let our best goal scorer go, even though he's not been performing for... For nearly two seasons however you still need to bring somebody in to try to replace that and that seems like a massive mistake that the Arsenal and Arteta have done he say, sits there and says that Vinay and, and Adil have done a great job but what job have they actually done what have they done they haven't actually done a great job at all um I'm just going to go with my starting lineup who I think who I would put into the team and it's, it's pretty to be honest which is not many players that we can actually put in the team and rotate around because the squad's thin and it's and it's it's proper thin. But I'll go with Ramsdale in goal, go with Tommy Asu if he's fit right back, Ben White, Gabriel and Kieran Tierney. I'll go with Partey and Odegaard in the middle um, with ESR in front of him. I'll go with Saka on the right, Martinelli on the left and play Laka up top. So that'll be my team against Wolves. The reason I leave Shaka out, because like I said, liability, I'd rather play with 11 men than 10 men. And to be honest with you, every time a referee has an opportunity to send him off, it's just there lingering to send him off, like they're just jumping at the chance. So I'll feel comfortable if he was on the bench more time. Um, the result, I feel like it's going to be a tight game. I don't feel like it's going to be a high scoring game. I feel like it might just be either a one goal in it, 2-1 or 1-0. I'm going to go with Arsenal 2-1 because you know we're susceptible of, of, of conceding a goal here and there. So I'll go 2-1 with Arsenal. Hopefully this uh, warm weather training in Dubai has helped. And I don't know what to say about the mentality or what the, the, the mindset is of the dressing room after Aubameyang went because I know that he was a very liked player in the dressing room. But we're just going to have to see and see what, what happens with it. But yes, people, 
that's Arsenal versus Wolves preview. I'll be back with you again with another video. Peace and love.